What's up guys, welcome back to LA Tech. Um, this video is going to be a follow-up video to my last video, which was my first video, uh, the Core i3-4130 unboxing and first look. If you haven't already checked that out, a uh, link will be in the, in the description to that video, right below the like button. Um, go ahead and check that out, so you'll kind of get a, a understanding about what this processor is before you watch this video. Um, so, as promised in the end of last video, uh, this video is going to be completely dedicated to benchmarking the processor. Uh, the first benchmark we're going to be doing is Geekbench 3, but first I want to show you um, some s statistics. Um, the specs to my computer, I'm running the Core i3-4130, obviously. Uh, I only have 4 gigs of RAM, which is enough for my purposes. And my graphics are the GTS 450. Uh, I think it's made by Galaxy. But and then here you can see um, the memory. All I have open is Task Manager, and it's recording. Um, I have this file thing open. So let's jump right into uh, Geekbench 3. Also, this is, I am running uh, Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. Uh, and I have the tryout mode, so apparently I cannot do 32-bit, I mean 64-bit benchmarking. Alright guys, so we are back with the Geekpoint Bench uh, 3 results. Um, Again, it only let, let me do the 32-bit uh, benchmark because I have the tryout version apparently. Uh, I mean, that's I didn't really pay for anything, so I guess that's what I get. But anyways, you can see uh, my motherboard up here. Uh, my single-core score was 2546, and my multi-core score was 4868, and so. In comparison, like the Core i5 uh, 4000 series, um, you guys can see um, well here on the uh, Core i7, I'll get back to the i5, but the Core i7 uh, on the single core, uh, say something like the 4770K, uh, it probably it didn't score. It scored about a thousand to fifteen hundred more points uh, than the i3. And on the multi-core score, well, <laughs> it's nowhere near. I mean, well, And on the multi-score, I mean, the i7 is a quad-core processor, I'm pretty sure it has hyper-threading, it's like 13, 12, 13, 14,000, I mean, it's only 48, almost 5,000 here, I mean, it's only a dual-core with hyper-threading. So, taking a look at the i5, comparison to the i5, um, just taking a look at the, uh, I know these aren't going to be exact, they're just estimates, don't yell at me, <laughs> um, this person, is, this is just like primatelabs.com, uh, this person, I found this i5 one, uh, they had the i5 4670K, um, this is a, it was a quad cord, the 32 bit, and their single core score was 5,075, which is about double mine. And on the core i5's multi score, uh, it scored almost 17,000, where this only scored about 5,000. But um, let's take a look at some other benchmarks. 
benchmarking software. So guys, here are the results for my Nova Bench uh, benchmark. The Nova Bench score is 948, but what we're really here to see is the CPU test, which it got a score of 439 on. Uh, guys, I really have no clue what this stuff means. Um, you can look at the numbers yourself if you don't uh, know, I guess. Here are my other benchmark. Uh, results if you want to just see them just if you want to see them let's compare these results online all right guys um, comparing these results um, I found the Intel Core i5 4670k 3.4 gigahertz and it got a 522 remember we got a 439 so that's not that far behind And looking at the Core i7 4770K 3.5 GHz, we can see it does do a lot better at scoring a score of 842. Uh, which is like double this, but you know, you pay double or triple the price. So, the I hope y'all enjoyed the Nova Bench. Alright guys, um, now we're going to take a look at the Cinebench benchmarking tool. Um, we're not going to do the OpenGL in this video, since this is about the CPU of this computer. So let's run the CPU. Alright guys, so taking a look at the results of the Cinebench, my CPU scored 3.08 point. So taking a look here at the Core i5 4670K, uh, it scored about double, 6.41 points versus 3.08. Um, let's see, Core i7 4770K scored a lot better, 8 points, uh, yeah, 8 points. But, of course, um, the performance of a c CPU is not all about benchmarking, it's about how the CPU performs in real life tasks. Yes, I think the CPU is worth every penny. Um, I haven't really tried out the AMD processors, so I couldn't tell you if you would be getting a better value if you went over and looked at the AMDs, but I got this because... I just wanted an Intel processor. Um, I might have wanted to do a Hackintosh, which I might be doing later, so stay tuned. <laughs> uh, uh, this the, it comes with the heat sink and fan, which is what I'm using. It's been completely adequate. You can't overclock this processor anyway. Uh, right now it's $119. I paid about $115. Uh, matter of fact. Pull up the prices on the Core i5. Let's see. Wow. The Core i5 is actually a lot more expensive. It's about a hundred and uh, it's about a hundred dollars more expensive. Uh, as of right now, the Core i3 uh, has well. It's a Haswell processor. The Haswell processors are the latest processor to be, like, it's the latest processor. There's no newer processor uh, chipset. The As of now, the Broadwells haven't come out yet. Uh, if, you, if you are going to be doing gaming and stuff, um, and, you need, and you're looking, you, you can't break the bank, I think this processor will be perfect for you. Um, it still has... It's only a dual core, but it still has the hyper threading, which can help for multi-core uh, games that utilize multi-core. 
Uh, this processor is also plenty enough for those who want to do light video editing on their PC or they just want to do simple tasks. If all you're doing is simple tasks, I really think the Pentium, the Hasbro Pentium would do just fine. It's only, it's only about $70. And I think yeah, that one's just fine, but that's a whole different video. But I think this processor, unless you're going to be doing, if you, unless you're going to be using a lot of programs uh, for the i5, where you know that you're going to be, uh, you know it's going to be taking advantage of all four cores. Um, I would say you might want to go with it. Uh, this also has Turbo Boost, which I don't believe the i3 has. But uh, the game, the games I play, I play. Um, War Thunder and World of Tanks mainly. Um, I don't do a lot of gaming necessarily, but um, I run. I only. I'm only running the standard definition monitor because I don't have an HD one. Um, but I run World of Tanks at high to max graphics on my standard definition monitor at 30 to 30 to 40 FPS, which I think it's not. It would be around 60 or 70 or 80 if I had better graphics card. Um, I have an older, cheapo graphics card. Uh, so, and then War Thunder, I, I, my frame rates are really good. Um, I also play. I have just recently bought Battlefield 3, and this this processor and graphics card and RAM combo, they run Battlefield 3 perfectly. I mean, if I had two more gigs of RAM or eight or four more gigs of RAM, I think it would be better. But I mean, I run it at max graphics. Uh, and I have no lag whatsoever. So I definitely recommend uh, going out and picking up this processor. Um, I mean, I would get it off Amazon unless they have a special somewhere else because it's $150 retail. I went to Best Buy and checked. <laughs> um, well, I hope y'all enjoyed my second video. Uh, it's only my second video. Uh, I. Uh, Excuse the bandy cam watermark. Uh, that's I can't really get the full version yet, and this is the best. Fraps would limit me to like a minute or two on their free version. But uh, if the microphone's uh, if y'all don't think the microphone is good or do you, you think it should be adjusted uh, differently, uh, drop a comment down because I'm using a. Uh, I've never tried this recording technique before, the way I'm doing it, um, so don't be hesitant to let me know. Uh, well, thanks for watching.